Her friends call her Muffy. A judge called her a psychopath. Sharon Graham is the mastermind of a sinister murder plot involving a love triangle, insurance money and a wood chipper. For the first time, we can play you the secret recordings that helped detectives crack this bizarre case. She's just an evil woman, as far as I'm concerned. To take someone's life like that and plan it and execute it. Sharon Baton not only shares the same first name as Sharon Graham, the two women were best friends, but that all changed when Sharon Graham was charged with murder. She is a pure evil woman. Simple as that? It's simple as that. Stay in jail. Don't ever get out. You need to tell us what happened. Tonight, for the first time, what really happened in the so-called wood chipper murder? We believe that man has been put in that machine and it's foul play. We have the moment detectives crack the case and the secret recordings from the killer's bedroom. Oh, babe, I hope you haven't gone against him. I have not. I've stuck up for an hour wait. You couldn't make this stuff up. The facts of this case read more like a movie thriller than reality. Sex, money, a love triangle, even a grisly murder on a remote country property. And the day I found out he was murdered, I couldn't believe it because he's such a nice person. And why people would do that for money. Colin Saunders' brother Bruce is the victim of this shocking crime. Blake is Bruce's son. Evan Selos, mum, dad was the only one I had left and then to lose him was nearly an impossible blow to keep going. I can even see it now, you know, the thought that that's where Bruce died and I have to drive over this every day. Hard to get it out of your head. Yeah, you can't. I, I never will. Six years ago, police were called to this property near Gympie, about three hours' drive north of Brisbane. At the time, it was home to Sharon Baton, who lived here alone after her husband had passed away. First responders made the grisly discovery, the shredded remains of 54-year-old Bruce Saunders in a wood chipper near the front gate here. At the time, they were told it was a terrible accident, that Bruce had somehow fallen headfirst into the chipper. She said that it was a terrible accident, that Bruce apparently was on his phone most of the day to her and um, that she thought that he dropped his phone in the chipper and he went to retrieve it and that's how he got caught in, in the chipper. And you believe that story? That sounded... yeah. yeah, well, I believe Sharon. As I said, she was like a, a sister to me, so... You know, I had no reason to doubt her, not at all. But the police did doubt Sharon Graham's story. And when you hear what was really going on, it's no wonder why. You see, Sharon was living with Bruce Saunders at the time of his death, but she was also in a relationship with Greg Rosa and a third man, Peter Koenig. So at one stage, Sharon was in a relationship with three different men. Well, it seems that way, doesn't it, when you look at it? You had no idea. I had no idea. None at all. And even my husband, who was very close with Peter, he had no idea that they were in a relationship. It seems Sharon Graham, or Muffy as her friends call her, had grown tired of Bruce and had moved in with Greg Rosa, who lived in a caravan. But soon after, Muffy moved back in with Bruce until Bruce was murdered. And the day after this happens, Greg Rosa moves in with yeah. Sharon. Yes, apparently so. Yeah. And... Uh, they share the master bedroom. Even more bizarre is Muffy's relationship with Peter Koenig, who admitted in court he'd taken naked photos of her. And initially you thought Peter was Sharon's partner. Yeah, we did. We even said, you know, at one stage about um, Peter being her partner. And uh, she said, oh, no, 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 this is just 
uh, a friend is, is more like brother-sister relationship. During a search of Rosa's property, police uncovered two notes written by Rosa, which detailed a previous plan to murder Bruce Saunders. The note said, 3.30 to 4am, has to be there before he wakes. Alarm goes off around 4.30am. Apparently they um, had a gun and um, the it was supposed to have been done in Bruce's home. There was a map of the house. But that plan was scrapped. Peter Koenig telling the court Sharon Graham invited he and Greg Rosa to a secret meeting at a motel where a new plan was hatched. This time the two men were going to invite Bruce Saunders to help them clear trees on Sharon Baton's property. They even got Bruce to hire an industrial sized wood chipper. The opportunity come up, I think, with my place, where it was more isolated, um, but it happened there. What was it about Sharon? How did she have this power over men? I don't know what power she had, but there was just something about her. There was an, an aura about her that would just draw people in. And, um, and she was just so good at it. She's very good. Have you lied? No, I haven't. What you're listening to are secret recordings of Sharon Graham and Greg Rosa. Police planted listening devices and video cameras in Bruce Saunders' house where the killers had taken up residence. Aren't the phones going to be tapped? I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. This video in the kitchen proves they were suspicious they were being recorded. Surveillance catches them meeting in Sharon Graham's car outside where they can't be heard. And now, according to the evidence in court, Sharon was the one that orchestrated all this. Yeah, that was a, that was a shock to the system. I would never have thought in a million years that she would do such a thing. At Bruce Saunders' funeral, Sharon Graham was sat in the front row being comforted by Bruce's son, Blake. She sat up the front with Blake and Blake was consoling her, um, had his arm around her and, yeah, so it was very strange. And looking back on that now, does it make you think, how could she possibly do that? Yeah, definitely. And to pretend that she was still in a relationship with Bruce at the time. Did you murder Bruce Saunders? No, I did not. In the months after Bruce's death, detectives questioned Peter Koenig and Greg Rosa, pitting the two men against one another. This is also your opportunity to tell us if you have knowledge that Peter has killed Bruce and put him in the chipper. Peter wouldn't do that. No way. He's such a quiet man and he would never do that. Police demand to know why the two men didn't call triple zero. Instead, they call Sharon Graham, who's apparently so distressed, they call her an ambulance. And he rings an ambulance for Sharon Graham, because she's so distressed. What about him? And what about this bloke? He looks like he might need a bit of help. Seven months after Bruce's death, Sharon Graham, Koenig and Rosa are charged with murder. In the end, Koenig said it was Rosa who murdered Bruce with an iron bar and he helped him drag Bruce's body to the wood chipper. In court, Koenig was asked why he did that and he said it was because Rosa had a bad back. I can't believe that they decided to do it on my property. And so you were collateral damage in all this. And I blamed myself for three years. I kept saying it was my fault. So was this all about the money? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Looking back, it, it's, Bruce was worth more to her gone than what he was alive. In court, the prosecution said Graham made a choice between Bruce Saunders, a decent man who owned his own home, and Rosa, who lived in a caravan park, and she chose the bad boy asking Rosa and Koenig to kill her ex-partner and make it look like an accident in a bid to claim $750,000 in life insurance. Sharon had a lifestyle that she liked to live 
and um, she was running out of money. So definitely the money was the culprit that ended up in his death. Greg Rosa and Sharon Graham were both found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in jail. Peter Koenig pleaded guilty to being an accessory after the fact to murder and received a suspended sentence. Sharon Baton's victim impact statement was read to the court. Sharon, you need to take responsibility for your decisions and stop blaming everybody else. You planned it and you made sure it was carried out. You had a way of getting men to do your bidding. It's like you have a spell over them. Outside court, Bruce Saunders' son Blake said he wanted everyone to know who his dad was. As a good man who loved his family and community and would do anything to help anyone. Bruce's brother Colin, still angry. We got the best outcome. But at the end of the day, she still has a life. And my brother doesn't. He's such a sweet man, very kind, very gentle, very giving. Sharon says she still struggles with what happened to Bruce in her front yard, even though she no longer lives there. Just got to move on and learn to cope with it. But yeah, you still do. You still see it in your dreams.